This is the big city news reporters giving a little small, slow country town a pointer, telling the Marlin Democrat to report a million people for possibly the first time have learned Marlin location on the map. The Sox did not return the following year, but the St. Louis Cardinals did. The Reds were there in 1906 and 1907, expected more teams to follow suit. The city added a second ballpark in 1907, and the Reds were joined by the Athletics. Marlin love affair with the New York Giants began in 1908, and apparently the feeling was mutual. Not only did the Giants train there for several weeks each year, they also became a big part of the community. The team played numerous fundraising games for local organizations and charities, and the Giants even played practice games against the Marlin High School. The city showed its appreciation by deeming Emerson Field to the team. The Giants were welcomed each year with a fish fry and a thank you ball that was held at the Arlington Hotel right before the Giants headed back to the Big Apple. The Arlington was the home for the Giants while in Marlin. It's where Jim Thorpe signed his first pro contract. Giants manager John McGraw told Marlin Democrat in 1912, Marlin, with its famous waters, is the finest place on earth for a ball team. Marlin fulfilled the desires of Giants manager John McGraw, who wanted a place where the world's greatest baseball team could train without getting in any trouble. The team holed in the Arlington, which was one of three hotels serving the town noted for its healing waters. The team practiced twice a day at Emerson Park, a mile from the hotel. The players would walk the train tracks both ways between workouts. This used to be an old railroad track. Do you see? Or do you not see? Yes. And this is where they was walking at. When you seen the old baseball team walking between the tracks, this is what you see right here. Yes, this is the ground. They took advantage of the hot baths and found entertainment where they could. Occasionally, they might go stir crazy. What is the definition of stir crazy? Psychologically disturbed, especially as a result of being confined. One player attacked the Giants coach unprovoked, biting him on his cheek. Rude Market once fired a pistol from his hotel room out of boredom. The man then got bored and a shot out the window. And when the authorities responded, John McGraw threatened to take his team and never return. Now, let me tell you this here. Whenever you see somebody with a full baseball outfit on and some church shoes on with it, you know they standing on business. And guess what? No charges were fouled. See, this is proof from back then to the present day that Marlon still turned a blind eye to those with some money and power. Go to Google, search Gradient Boundary, Texas. The Gradient Boundary. Texas court have adopted the gradient boundary as the usual divide line between public ownership of a stream bed and the lower bank area and private ownership of the higher bank area and the uplands beyond. Thus, there is generally no question as to the public right to use the bank area up to the gradient boundary. Let me repeat. There is generally no question as to the public right to use the bank area. This man down here to cut the whole road off denying access to the bank area. Why? Because he have money. Don't get mad at me. I'm just a Marlin, Texas messenger. Matter of fact, speaking of the falls, did you know what Marlin used to be called before Marlin? Cerreville de Vizca, Texas. Cerreville de Vizca or Fort Marlin or Bucksnort is a ghost town in Falls County, Texas, United States. The settlement was established in 1834 by Sterling C. Robinson and named for his mother, Miss Sarah Nee Macklin Robinson and Augustine Vizca, the Mexican governor of Cujula, Tejas. The site was located at the falls of the Brazos River where the river formerly dropped 10 feet and where a well-used ford was located. The town was temporarily deserted in 1836 during the runaway escape and permanently abandoned soon afterwards because of Native American raids. Let me explain to you. W what's my nationality? When you get on the radio and I'm running, what'd you say? Uh, black male. You hear me? Let me explain something to you. Could you go back to that phone again? Yep. Yes, I want to share something with you. Yes. Yes. Name somebody. Go back to Google. Name a maker of dictionaries. Webster. God, absolutely correct. Now, I don't know how old you is, but back in 1939. Okay, the word G A Y, mm -hmm. gay. Mm -hmm. 
what did that used to mean back in the days? Happy. Happy. Give me some Pam. Happy. Well, we dealing with people that like to change shit. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Happy used to mean, mean gay, jolly. Right. You looking pretty gay today, Crawford. <laughs> yeah, it's the honeymoon. I mean, anniversary. You understand me? And you already know, I'm going to deal with you twice. This is Officer Crawford. Hey, Ask him, brother. I'm just trying and, and, now, and now he doing it. But don't worry about it. I'm finna go on and give it to the people, man. I'm finna show him. I'm finna show him. You remember that night y'all came down my road with your lights off? And I talked to y'all for, for, you hear me? Huh? You in Crawford. Don't worry about it. You remember I asked for your cell phone? And I read and gave you the instructions? Right. You looking pretty gay today, Crawford. <laughs> yeah, it's the honeymoon. I mean, anniversary. You understand me? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, well, now if you look up the word gay, it have homosexuality abbreviated to it. Right. They have changed the meaning of this word right in front of our face. We're okay. dealing with people that like to change things. Okay, well, when you were a little boy, when I was a little boy, a man could only marry a woman. Mm -hmm. But guess what you could do now? Why? Because we're dealing with people that like to change things. You on, you on Google, yep. Webster Dictionary? Go I to Google. Always. Go to Google. Okay. Type in Webster Dictionary. 1828. 1828. You remember I asked for your cell phone and I read and gave you the instructions? All right. Hit search. Okay, now hit that first link right there. Yep. Okay, now that bar, see that box? Yep. Whatever word you type in there, it's going to tell you what that word meant right. back then. Type in the word American. Let's see what you had to be in order to be called an American. Okay. We're going to look up the noun. Noun is people, places, and things. Let's see what the noun American, read it out loud. A native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races. Hold on, pause right quick. Pause right quick. See, in order for you to be called an American, you had to have the copper. Hold on, wait a minute. We're going to finish reading it. You had to have the copper color race skin. Fort Marlin was built on the West Bank site and abandoned years later in favor of the town Bucksnort, which occupied the East Bank. Bucksnort vanished when a nearby town of Marlin was founded. Because we're dealing with people that like to change things. The town was named to honor John Marlin. Well, who is John Marlin? John Marlin is an American firearm manufacturer and inventor. How many of y'all knew Marlin, Texas was named after a gun maker? Because we're dealing with people that like to change things. He worked at the coat plant in Hartford during the American Civil War. Well, Samuel Blaine, his son-in-law, laid out the streets and lots and drafted a map around the square. Yes, sir. And if you look at this map right here, as I zoom in and show you, you see the curvature right here in the river? Look at the curvature right here, showing you how accurate the map is. This map was drawn by Joseph Martin, August the 13th, 1868, which was three years after the Civil War. The American Civil War was the four-year war from 1861 through 1865 between the United States and the 11 Southern states that seceded from the Union and formed the Confederate States of America. Well, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January the 1st, 1863, as the nation approached its third year of bloody civil war. The proclamation declared that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious states are and henceforward shall be free. President Lincoln recognized that the Emancipation Proclamation would have to be followed by a constitutional amendment in order to guarantee the abolishment of slavery. See, the 13th Amendment was passed at the end of the Civil War before the Southern state had been restored to the Union. Well, this should have easily passed through Congress. However, though the Senate passed it in April 1864, the House initially did not. President Lincoln took an active role to ensure passage through Congress. He insisted the passage of the 13th Amendment be added to the Republican Party platform for the upcoming 1864 presidential election. His effort was met with success and the House passed the bill January 1865 with a vote of 118 to 56. See, what the northern states did when they defeated the southern states was they eliminated the harsh labor slavery and they switched it over to the 13th amendment slavery section one of the 13th amendment states 
neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted. Okay, so let me get this right. You have a group of people that was enslaved that worked from sunup to sundown for free that lost their language, their custom, their tradition, their heritage, who watched their babies being sold right out of their arms, women being raped by their ruthless slave owners. My name is Ray Bledsoe. Have anybody heard of the New England Patriots quarterback Drew Bledsoe? He is a European, and I am a so-called black, negro, colored, African-American, N-word. All of those different names that have been given to us over the years, which is proof that they have taken our names, we was unable to read and write, no birth certificates after the Civil War, which was in 1865. Now, have anybody heard of the 40 acres and a mule? Well, the 40 acres and a mule refers to the unfulfilled promise made to formerly enslaved African Americans after the Civil War, which was intended to provide them with land and resources for economic self-sufficiency. So, they didn't have anywhere to go. So they entered into sharecropping. Some learned to read and write out of sure will and determination. They faced burning crosses done by the KKK. It was nothing for a black body to be swinging from the ropes, hanging from trees. I'm going to share with y'all what they did with the land that we were supposed to have been getting. So this land had a name before Marlin was founded in 1834 by Sterling C. Robinson and named for his mother, Miss Sarah Macklin Robinson. Because we're dealing with people that like to change things. It was the site of the land office for Robinson Colony. Fort Vizca, later known as Fort Milam, was built for Cerroville de Vizca for the protection of the settlers. After reaching a population of approximately 200, the community was abandoned in 1836 as a result of Indian hostilities. This is how they set up their new slavery program. They took land, they redistributed it, renamed it, because we're dealing with people that like to change things, incorporated the name, set up post office, gave them zip codes, since the so-called Indians were being hostile, a gun manufacturer that go by the name of Marlin, oh, we got to go and holler at him. And since Marlin was the site of the land office for Robinson Colony, Marlin received the zip code of 76661. Y'all see all the settling taking place shortly after the Civil War? Well, settlement in this area began shortly after the Civil War. And this community was known as Willow Spring. Now, how many of y'all knew Mark, Texas used to be Willow Springs. Since that name was already in use, the people chose the name Mart when they applied for the post office, which opened in 1880. And the town incorporated in 1901. Y'all don't see what's happening? Peep this. Are you aware that a three-legged table is more stable than a four-legged table on uneven ground? And speaking of uneven ground, the first exploring expedition that recorded travel in this area was made in 1721 by the Marquez de San Miguel de Oello, a Spaniard who established many missions in Texas. In one trip from San Antonio to an East Texas mission, he ventured away from the regular road, the old San Antonio road, and wandered north during this time he camped near the Brazos River in a major tributary. He named this tributary Bosque, where early Spanish explorers bestowed the names Bosque, pronounced Bosque, meaning wooded. The first survey for land grants in Bosque Valley came about in 1839. In 1849, a few years later, Texas obtained statehood. The first permanent settlers arrived to the territory still roamed by Native Americans. That means the Native Americans was already there when the settlers came. Yeah. And the settlers was lured by fertile, inexpensive land. Yeah, that belonged to somebody else. And more settlers came, mostly Anglo-Americans moving west with the frontier. And Norwegians and German immigrants. The pioneer farmers and ranchers were industrial and creative. They built homes, churches, and schools. Mills for their wheat, gins for their cotton. And produced a thriving livestock business because we're dealing with people that like to change things. Well, prior to settlers' arrival, Tawakani and Tonkawa Native Americans were the only humans in the area. Both tribes were peaceful, though the Comanches that lived nearby proved to be the opposite. Settlers fought them frequently upon arrival and often lost supplies and cattle to the aggressive Comanches. Other believe that the settlers, there we go with the settlers, people that's not from here, that done moved in and settling in, who have mistakenly thought they were on the edge of the 98th meridian. The county was surveyed by George Bernard Erath, Erath County's namesake, 
after Norwegian settlers arrived. Doctors Josephus M. Steiner and Andrew Montgomery donated a total of 120 acres in 1854. The same July the 4th, lots were auctioned off that fall and a one log courthouse stood at the center of the government. There go the courthouse, 